Hello everybody and welcome to Krista So Crafting. My name is Krista. I really appreciate you joining me here today. So today we are starting something new. We are going to be working on a block of the week. Now I have 12, 12 and a half inch blocks in mind that I'm going to do over the next 12 weeks. And I hope that you're going to enjoy this. How I'm going to start is I'm going to start with an easier block and then we're going to gradually work our way up to a more difficult type of a block. So this week we are working on a disappearing nine patch. I have picked out just various blocks and I'm going to trim them up to four and three quarters of an inch. So right now they're just in the sizes that I pulled out of my cupboard. So as you can see, you know, this yellow one's quite a bit bigger. I just went through my stash. So I'm going to make all of my blocks in scrappy colors. So I'm not going to get too carried away with how they look. I'm just going to grab them and I'm going to go with it. And it's going to look great. It will look great. So grab your nine squares and cut them at four and three quarters inch each. And I will meet you back here and I will show you our next step. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay them out. So this will be my top left. So I'm just going to sh show you guys laid out so you guys can see. I kind of already have them laid out the way I want. So I'm just going to lay these down. Now I chose a yellow for in the center. You can do whatever colors you choose. And again, I'm just going scrappy. I just thought, you know what? Why not, right? Oops, this one goes there and there and there. These are what I'm going to use for my disappearing nine patch. So how it gets its name is because there are nine squares and we're going to sew them together and then we're going to cut them apart and we're going to rearrange them. And how you rearrange them will change the look of the block. So for this purpose, we are going to just start sewing these together. The easiest way is to start, this is facing you, so this is my top. I'm going to start sewing these together. Now, if you have troubles going from here to your sewing machine with your squares and then, you know, getting them mixed up, put a pin in here. Put a pin in the side where you want to sew it. So I'm going to put a pin there and I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to put a, these together and I'm going to pin in here and then I'm going to take them to my sewing machine. Oops, I have two pins there. And I'm going to sew them together along these lines here, okay? So these edges right here. So let's go do that. And I'm just going to use a straight stitch with a stitch length of 2.6, somewhere around there, 2.4 on both of these. Okay, so I'm gonna move this under here and get it ready to go. Got my string hanging out here. And I'm gonna change my needle to a quarter inch stitch. So what that means is on my sewing machine, I have a Janome S4. I can line up the material on the edge of my presser foot and put my needle over here and it will sew a quarter of an inch. That's what I'm going to use for the um, stitch width on all of these. And again, I'm using a stitch length of 2.6. And I do like to do a little back stitch just because we're going to be cutting these apart and we're going to be manhandling them like crazy. And I just want to make sure that they stay together. So I'm going to do a little back stitch at the beginning and the end of each row here. So I'll do that. And then I will move these out of the way. Make sure that I'm not going to sew over them. Make sure everything is lined up. And remove that pin and away we go. So that is our first row of our disappearing nine patch. So I'm going to repeat that same process. So here is the next row, the middle row. I'm going to take a pin 
and I'm going to fold this over. And this is, again, not to hold it in place or anything. It's just to help remind me that these are the two edges that I want to sew together. So I'm doing that side. And then I'm going to flip this over and flip this over. And I'm going to put a pin right here. And now this piece is all ready for me to sew. So let's remove this pin. If you don't have issues with, you know, um, having things get turned around on you, you don't need to do that step. But I just like to do it just to ensure that I am sewing down the right side. And then cut my thread and turn, remove that pin and line everything up nice. This is a nice quick little block, but it has lots of potential for different, different ways that you can lay it out. Okay, so that's our middle piece, and I will bring over these three, and I'll do the same thing. So I'm going to sew this one right away, so I won't put a pin in that one just because I have it right at the sewing machine, but I am going to put a pin here just to make sure I don't want it to get mixed up because I do not want to have to use my seam ripper. There we go. So fold that out of the way, line this all up nice and neat. And you can use whatever color thread you like. Right now I have white in here just because I, a lot of my blocks ha, are lighter colors. And I just thought that the white would be a, a nice contrast. Okay, and let's sew down this side. Pull out this pin. Line this up. I really hope that you are enjoying this so far. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. I will happily answer any questions you have. All right, now we have those done. I've moved you now, so you're in my kind of line of vision. So I'm going to turn you around. So now we have these three strips. And now what we need to do is put them together and we're gonna sew across these sections. Now how I'm going to press them is on the top and the bottom ones, I'm going to press these to the outside. So I'm just gonna finger press it right now, but I will take it over to the ironing board. So I'm gonna finger press these to the outside. This middle one, I'm gonna to press to the inside, like so. And then this one, will be to the outside. The reason being is so that when we go to sew these together and we put these together like this, these ones here from the middle row will be to the inside and the outside, two outside rows will be going, being pressed to the outside. And then we can go and we can line up our seams and nest them together and we'll get a nice, nice point on our each of our corners. All right, have these all nicely pressed. These ones are pressed to the outside. These seams are pressed to the inside. I'm going to start at the bottom here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the middle one and pop it over. Now, I know which one is the middle because it's got the yellow square in it. If you don't have that, maybe put a little, um, put a pin or something in here so that once you start messing with these, you always know which one is your center block but I know which one it is because it's yellow. So I'm gonna fold these over like this and I'm going to trim off that little thread. Okay, so now when we bring these up and together, you can see that those seams nestle in there beautifully. Let's pin this and now we can take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch these together Again, using our quarter of an inch seam all the way down this edge here. Oops, what happened there? There we go. You wanna make sure that everything is lined up nice and neat so that when we finish the project, you have an item that you're very proud of.
All right, let's go to the sewing machine. And I'm gonna start right on that edge and I am gonna bring in my little pin container so I can put my pins in there. Put my needle down and I'm just going to do that little back stitch. And I'm gonna sew as straight as I can, right along this edge, following that edge, pulling the pins out as I come to the joins. Okay, this is looking funky here, so I'm just going to try to, there we go. I think I had it just a little bit crooked there. There we go. Making sure that, that those joins are right together. Okay, and like so. All right, so here we have this. So now when we open it up, I just wanna show you. Look at how, look at how beautiful that join is. So if I finger press it, look at how nice they all get together. You get a nice point in the center. Nothing is overlapping. And that's where using the pins really helps and ironing those seams in opposite directions. So there's that. I'm gonna fold this one over, line up these joins just like this. And you can feel when they are butted right up to each other. And when you feel that, then you can go ahead and put your stick pin in. I do advise using stick pins for this step, not the clips, just because with the pins, you can get right on that seam where we stitched and it holds it nice and together okay you I mean if all you have is clips by all means use that but I do prefer using the pins in this step because it gives me a, a, a join all the way down that seam and it keeps it so that the material is not shifting on me at all so I'm going to put a pin in here like that and let's go sew down this side Bring this in, get everything lined up, and away we go. Don't forget that back stitch. And make sure you remove your pins, don't sew over your pins. I know some people do, but I don't. I don't want to chance a needle breaking. So I remove my pins all the time. I keep, so especially when I'm doing the joins like this, I keep my pin in there as close as I can. And so that when I take it out, the presser foot will help hold that in place and it's not going to move. And again, have a look at our joins. They should be nice and neat. Look at that, beautiful. And then this one, of course, I will take it over to the ironing board and give it a really good press. Beautiful. Here is our block. So now what we need to do is take this over to the cutting board and we're going to cut this up into some different shapes and then we're gonna rearrange it and put it back together. Here we have our block. Now, when we measure this out, it should be 13 inches square at this point in time. So I'm going to take and line this up in the bottom corner and I'm gonna line this all up nice and neat so I know when I go to cut this that I'm cutting it right in half. So just move that over a little bit. And we're going to cut this in half both ways. So this way right down the center and this way. So I know my block is 13 inches square. So I know that I need to cut at six and a half inches this way and this way. So I'm going to take and lay my ruler down on the six and a half inch mark like that. And I'm going to cut that. 
Now, for those of you who've never made one of these before, it almost seems counterintuitive. You know, we go ahead and we sew this block together so beautifully, and then we're going to go and cut it apart again. But trust the process. So again, I'm going to line this up on the six and a half inch line, right? Like this. Get this lined up nice and neat. And if I move that over a little bit more. And right there, I'm going to give this a trim. We have four blocks now. Oopsie, that's still together a little bit there. There we go. Now we have four blocks that we can work with. Now here's where the magic starts to happen. Because we have now taken our 13 inch block and we've cut it into four, we can now turn these and make them into new blocks. So the first thing, let's just take this top left and turn it and we'll take the bottom right and turn it. Do you see how that changed that block? So now can you imagine if you had a whole quilt of these? And so then you would have the two large ones in the center and then the two small, two large, two small. Do you see the pattern that would happen there? I think that would be so pretty. You could also turn all four of these into the center and you have a totally different block. Isn't that just so cool how by two cuts, using nine blocks and two cuts, you can have so many dip different options. So if we were to turn these, then we're back to you know what we had before. But again, it's all on how you wanna cut it. So let's just put these back for now. So from here, we are going to take these two and turn them so that the big blocks are in the center. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna take these to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew these together like this. I'm gonna line these up and these will get sewn together like this. And again, I'm going to bring in and put in a pin so that by the, when I get to my sewing machine, I know which side I want to sew. Now, I wanna show you that we don't have any joins to match up this time. The way we're cut, we've cut it and the way we're gonna put it together, there's no joins. So all we have to do is take these and line them up and just sew down these sides. Easy peasy. Let's bring in our first two blocks. And this is where the pin is, so this is the side that I'm going to sew. So I'm gonna remove that pin and I'm gonna keep that edge here so I know. I'm not gonna turn it or twist it or anything because I don't want to get these mixed up. So I'm just going to match up that edge. Make sure, I think I need to go over a little bit more. There we go. Line that up, and again, quarter inch, do a little back stitch. Make sure that it's all lined up all the way down, like so. Make sure that those seams that are already there, the existing seams, that if they're facing that way, that they stay facing that way, okay? We don't want big lumps in our quilt block. Okay, so I'm gonna put that down on the bottom over here and I'll bring in the other one and I'm gonna do the same thing. Line this up as best I can like that and start stitching and do that back stitch and away we go. And just like that, we have both of those sewed. All right, I'm gonna take these over to the ironing board and I'm gonna press these. And again, I'm gonna press the seams in opposite directions. It doesn't matter which way, but let's say I'll point, press this one this way. So then this one, I'm gonna press that way, okay? Here are our blocks. 
So now, as you can see, I've pressed this seam to the right, and I've pressed this seam to the left. Fold this over on top, find that join, find those two seams and put them right together so that it creates a beautiful centerpiece. Put a pin right down that seam like that. And then again, I just like to put a pin on both ends just to make sure that everything is laid out, out the way it's supposed to be. And then this side. Now, all of our blocks are gonna be constructed the same way, but they're gonna all look totally different because we're all using different material, which is so fun when you're sewing and cutting up blocks, cutting up material and putting them into blocks. Let's go to the sewing machine. Okay, let's bring this in and make sure it's all lined up nice and neat. Backstitch and sew right down. Again, making sure that those seams that are already there, that they're laying down that the way they were. Okay, so I'm going to Make sure this is all lined up nice and neat. Pull out my pin. Oh, see, I can feel that one. That seam was being pushed the other way and I didn't want that. So, I'm gonna get that laying down and continue. There is our beautiful block. Now I am gonna take this over to the ironing board and I'm going to press this seam the way it wants to go. There's no right or wrong way at this point, so let's go do that. And here we go, here's our block, yay. And you know, just imagine, like I said, a whole quilt done out of these blocks, right? Like it would, I don't even know what's the word for it, like radi radiate out. So from here, you're gonna have another big block and then two little and a big and two little and the opposite going the other way. And I just think that would be so pretty done in a, a whole quilt, but it should be 12 and a half inches. All right, here's the moment of truth. Let's lay this out. So it's right in that corner. And I am at 12 and a half inches. Now, if your block, here's a tip for you. My block, is seeming to go like this a little bit. So what I will do is I will take it on the opposite side and just kind of pull a little bit. And what that does is it realigns those fibers. See, look at that, and now it's square. Whereas before it was kind of wanting to go to the left by doing that. And if you have, um, what's it called, like best press, you can use that. I'm really happy with how all of those points, those joins came together. As you can see, they're just so precise and that's using that pin. It almost makes me want to do a whole quilt top with this and have those radiating out. I just think it would be so pretty. The disappearing nine block is so fun and you have different options of how you can lay it out. And this is just one way to cut the disappearing nine block. There are multiple different ways. And if you're interested, I can show you some of the other ways in future videos. So comment below if you'd like to see other ways to cut and to lay out disappearing nine patches. I really hope you join me next week as I bring along the next video in the quilt block of the week tutorials. I really hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to bake the disappearing nine patch. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. Comment below if you have any questions whatsoever and I will answer them as soon as I can. Join me next week as I bring you along the block number two in the block of the week. Thank you again for joining me today on Christa So Crafty and happy crafting.